So the chain I'm going to be using this bike is a DAD 530ZVMX and it is 118 links long on the GSX F600. So I already have it fed in around the front sprocket and it's hanging over the back one. The tool I'm going to be using for this is a blue spot chain breaker. Stock code if anybody wants to know is 07903. Pretty cheap little one, it's about 20 pounds. It'll do the job. This is what comes in the kit. This is our new master link with the, there's four o-rings with it as well and a little packet of grease. So firstly I'm going to slip on two of the o-rings. And put lots of the grease on here. I'm going to slide in the master link. And the next step is to measure the width of one of the already riveted links. As you can see, that is around 22 millimeters. Put some more grease on. The two remaining O-rings. Set on the plate. This is the press fit, so we're going to have to set up our little tool for that. We want to press it in to as close as we can. It's 22 millimeters here. We don't want it too loose. We don't want it too tight, so it's binding up. Now for this job, we need the body of the tool, the part with the two holes in it, they are going to go over the outside two rivets so they can be pushed on through. So that goes in like that. And this part with the long slot in it, this is going to be over the back two so it doesn't push against the plate and just drives the rivets, rivets through. You want to try and line up the tool so that the two holes are perfectly in line with the pins, with the rivets. Once this is done, gently wind in the tool until you get it to the required 22 millimeters. Okay, so after some messing about, maybe because it was a cheaper tool, I found that one side was pushing in further than the other. So if you see these little marks there, I actually had to do one side at a time whenever it got near the end but in the end I got pretty much bang on what the rest of them were 22 millimeters each side of the rivet it's been exactly the same so now we're going to set up the tool for squeezing the rivet and this time on the back side we're going to be using this little anvil with the indentation here the larger one which fits over the rivet but it's not a flat fit it rocks back and forward on the rivet so it's not touching the actual plate it'll be going on the back side and on the front we'll be using the largest pin in the set I don't know if you can see it there but it's got a little hump in the middle and then it's flat out at the outer edge so basically once the pin spreads out and it goes over the hump and hits the flat spot that's as far as you need to go any more than that you're not doing any good now a way to check is to measure the diameter of the rivet now and measure it after you squeeze it So 
So yeah, I'm using the 3.8 millimeter pin here in this one because it's a nice fit inside. See it wobbles about. When I have it completely squeezed, it should be a nice flat sort of fit and not wobble about too much. So with your tool, screw out the top driver part, drop in your pin. Keep it just inside the body for the meantime, or just enough so it'll touch the pin so you know it's perfectly aligned with it. So first I'm going to snug up the body right up against the link without squeezing it too tight so it supports it. Make sure the little pin feels like it's engaged. Get the handle and I'm first of all just going to give it maybe half a turn just to make sure and then take it off just to make sure it's lining up even a little quarter turn yeah it seemed to be lining up fine now after giving it various quarter turns, I'll keep checking it and I'm going to show you what it looks like whenever it's done. The little dome, let's move it in a bit closer. As you can probably see this one is visibly larger, not a massive amount but it is larger than this one, especially looking at the center hole. Uh, you notice this one in the original pinhole is it can wobble about on the dome but on the one that's finished it is a nice flat finish fits in there just nice that's that's the limit of the pin whenever it bottoms out on that little dome you can see there so that's how you know that's done so it's simply a matter of doing the other one checking that both links are nice and free and that's that my pin ended up expanding from around about 5.34 millimeters up to 5.58 millimeters. Yeah, after a short run, just take a look at the links, make sure everything looks fine with the rivets, and that's pretty much job done. So if you liked this video and it was some help to you, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.